Today we're talking about a topic that is very close to my heart and probably yours too if you're here. Data structures and algorithms for front-end interviews. And the big question on everyone's mind is how much DSA do you really need to know for front-end interviews? And honestly, I don't know. I mean, I've heard some people say you need to know everything from sorting algorithms to graph algorithms and others say you just need to know how to make a good cup of coffee for your interviewer. But let's face it, if making coffee was the key to getting a front-end job, I'd be swimming in job offers right now. Uh, to be honest, I don't even know how to make a coffee. In fact, I'm so bad at making coffee that I once tried to make a latte and ended up with a latte instead. Okay, that was a that was a really bad joke. Let's get back to the video. But jokes aside, it's important to have a good understanding of basics of data structures and algorithms. You should know your arrays from your linked list, your sorting algorithms from your searching algorithms, and your trees from your graphs. Okay, maybe not graphs in most cases, but if you can tell a binary search from a binary search tree, trust me, you're off to a good start. The level of DSA questions asked in a front-end interview can vary depending upon the type of company and the size of company that you're interviewing with. So typically big companies like Google, Amazon, Meta can ask you anything related to DSA from basic concepts to advanced algorithms like anything you can think of in data structures because they have a dedicated round for data structures and algorithms and it's been like this for years. So if you're preparing for these types of companies, you need to be good at everything in data structures and algorithms. But on the other hand, mid-level companies may focus on set of fundamental concepts that are essential for front-end development. These concepts may include data structures like arrays, string, linked lists, and algorithms like sorting and searching, tree traversal algorithms, or most of the tree algorithms, and graphs sometimes as well. So these are the second type of companies. And now finally, third type is of startup companies, which may focus on more practical and application specific problems that are relevant to their product or service. This may include problems related to arrays, string, linked list, and tree-based algorithms. And sometimes these companies don't even have a DSA round. They would ask you questions directly, uh, like if you're giving for a React interview, right? They'll, they'll ask questions related to React or just concepts of JavaScript. So it's pretty much hard to say for these startup companies because most of the times they don't really ask DSA questions, but even if they do ask, it's like basic arrays, strings, linked list, and tree-based algorithms as I mentioned earlier. So it's important to understand the type of company you're interviewing with and tailor your DSA preparation accordingly. However, don't forget that the key is to understand the fundamental concepts and develop strong problem solving skills that can help you tackle any coding problems thrown in your way in a front end interviews. So see, it's not always about doing DSA to prepare for an interview or something like that, right? What I always like to suggest people is to do DSA to make your fundamentals of coding better. Like for example, I've seen a lot of people code in C, C++, Java for front-end interviews. Like why, why are you coding in these languages? You should be using JavaScript to code because that way you're gonna start thinking of how this logic works in JavaScript and then you're gonna be able to much more efficiently do the work in your company as well, right? So that is why you need to be able to apply that knowledge that you learned by doing these DSA questions to real world problems. And that gets me to my next point, that interviewers often like to test your DSA skills by presenting a real world problem that you need to solve using some DSA concepts. For example, in this video that I made a few months ago, I presented a file explorer problem which was asked to me during one of my interviews where you had to use concepts like recursion and graph traversing algorithms to implement an insert functionality. Therefore, it's crucial to practice coding problems that involve DSA concepts in the context of real world problems. This can help you build your problem solving skills and confidence for when you encounter a similar problem in a front end interview. Only then you can avoid, you know, just mugging up these algorithms. So why not try your hand at some coding challenges or start your own side projects? Not only you will be able to gain some valuable experience, but you might just surprise yourself with how much you have learned. Like if you're using some website, let's say for example, Canva, right? Try to clone Canva instead of just going to Amazon or you know Facebook and trying to clone these straightforward websites that 100 different YouTubers have already made a tutorial on. There is not much coding challenge involved there. But if, if you try to make something like canva.com, you're gonna understand how you can in, 
you know, import images, how you can do drag and drop stuff. And to make such a huge app, you have to optimize it as well, right? You have to, you have to app optimize your code as well. That is when you'll encounter DSA concepts and how to use them in such kind of apps. But still, I understand that you might be feeling overwhelmed by the prospect of preparing for a DS interview. Or maybe you have already learned some DSA in the past, but you want to brush up your DSA skills. So don't worry, I have some exciting news for you. I will soon be starting with our data structures and algorithms in JavaScript course here on YouTube for absolutely free, which will cover all of the essential topics you need to know to ace your next front-end interview. From basic concepts to advanced algorithms, you'll learn everything you need to know to impress your interviewer and land that dream job. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also follow me on Instagram. There I'm constantly posting all of the updates about my upcoming videos. So you're gonna get to know early when my DSA course will start. So you can open Instagram right now and search roadside coder. Now see, it's not about knowing everything in DSA. It's about knowing enough to get the job done and having the confidence to apply that knowledge, whether it be in, the, in an interview or it will be in a real world scenario in your job. But another important aspect to keep in mind while solving a coding problem in a front-end interview is breaking down the problem into small sub-problems. This can help you understand the problem better and come up with an effective solution. It also shows the interviewer that you have the systematic approach towards problem solving. Now, how can you do that? How can you break down the problem into small parts? You should not be afraid to ask questions from your interviewer, even if you have the slightest doubt on the given problem. Because I've seen a lot of people, they just dive straight into the solution and don't think much about it. So try to take your time and tackle one issue at a time. Trust me, this can help you avoid getting stuck and coming up with a more efficient solution in the end. And remember, your ability to break down a problem and approach it systematically is just as important as your DSA knowledge in a front-end interviews. Obviously, you need to know all of the important syntax because if you don't even know your syntax, how are you going to approach the problem? So that is what, what I meant earlier when I asked you to create real-world problems because that way you're going to have that syntax in your mind that, okay, this can be done by using, let's say, trees or graphs or even a simple array. Now, the only thing left is to develop a logic real time which obviously is going to come with more and more practice so to summarize this video as i mentioned earlier the type of dsa questions depend on the type of company so go through all the topics that i've mentioned earlier and if you want to read the textual format of this video i've written a complete blog you can click the link in the description down below and read that blog i've also included some free resources in that blog from where you can refer useful DSA questions for your next front-end interview. And with that, I hope I've given you a little bit of insight into how much DSA you need for front-end interviews. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button because my data structures and algorithm course with JavaScript is going to be dropping very soon on this channel right over here for absolutely free. And remember, even if you don't get a good job, you can always console yourself with a good cup of coffee. Of course, if you know how to make one. Yeah, yeah yes, miss, I'll get back to washing the dishes.